It's 6,000 BC in the jungles of Southeast Asia. The wild red jungle fowl tears through the forest, navigating using receptors in his eyes to tap into the Earth's magnetic compass. His feathers are the color of dawn, camouflaging him amongst the leaves that collect on the jungle floor. His world is a vibrant one. His vision, superhero-like. He sees colors that we humans will never be able to see and can use each of his eyes independently. With one eye, he combs his surroundings for food, snatching berries from bushes and finding fallen seeds. With the other eye, he keeps on the lookout for predators. And when the time comes, he can disappear up into the forest canopy like a dragon. All of this makes our jungle bird particularly hard to catch. But humans are hungry and clever, and when we want something, especially to feed our families, we often find a way. So he was caught, placed in a cage, and eventually consumed. This unnoticed moment in our history marks the first move to take the wild out of the jungle bird and turn him into the domestic chicken we know today. And this set into motion a different kind of food system. The end of World War II brought an unprecedented acceleration of science and technology into our lives. The mass production of penicillin, a race to walk on the moon's craters, and the invention of large-scale animal production, starting with the jungle bird's ancestor, the chicken. Twice the size of our lean jungle bird, the meaty chicken of tomorrow becomes the favorite type of chicken for entrepreneurial farmers across America. Add a few tons of antibiotics to the chicken's feed, and another step is taken. Now, farmers raise tens of thousands of chickens entirely indoors. It usually takes millions of years for physical changes of this magnitude to occur. But the chicken is a unique example of a new, human-driven era where man is the primary driver of change in the natural world. And 70 years later, we find no other living organism raised for food that has expanded so quickly in volume and scale as the chicken. At 23 billion and growing, chickens are the most numerous land species on the planet, and they are seriously hungry, which means millions of acres of the most biodiverse rainforest have been replaced with field after field after field of chicken feed. It's the year 2050. Something is off. Those more abstract, often hard to understand disturbances of 2020 were all pointing in the same direction. Not only did we act too late, but we didn't really act at all. We directed bulldozers to clear the planet's wild spaces for the sake of feeding the animals we eat. We removed our forests and the threads that link nearly every tree to one another in a network that nourished animal life and removed billions of pounds of carbon from our air. The truth is, the forest was more than just a collection of trees. And with few wild spaces left, our grandkids will only experience them and the billions of species that call them home through our faded memories of an older, healthier, more gentle world. And so we dragged another kind of risk closer to our families, a more virulent strain of flu, which jumped from an animal fleeing the remains of their habitat to a single chicken in North Carolina and now into our lives. We're finally seeing that health does not respect the walls between species, geographies, rich or poor. And the truth is, our planet is sick. And now, so are we. Have we missed the opportunity to turn this thing around? Or is today the turning point? We now know that in our small, interconnected world, there is not human health or climate health or animal health. There is only health. So for the first time in human history, Singapore 
has opened the door to a healthier world. A world where one single cell can produce an unlimited amount of meat. All without the disturbance of a single forest, the displacement of a single animal's habitat, or the use of a single drop of antibiotics. And all without a single life taken. It's a way of feeding our families and rebuilding our planet. It's called cultured meat, and it tastes like chicken, because it is. Under a microscope, these cells are like the cells in the chicken we eat today and the jungle bird of yesterday. The meat is high in protein and essential amino acids, and it's entirely free of any genetic modification. Our ancestors saw the jungle bird as a symbol of awakening, the coming of a new dawn. And now, so do we. Because 2020 is the turning point, when we realize that we can be remembered for ingenuity and action, and that together, we can set in motion a food system that is fair, just, and kind, and one that reflects the best of our humans.